Lists behave like any other text for the most part, but there are some CSS properties specific to lists that you'll need to know about, as well as some best practices to consider. Lists are a fundamental part of HTML. They are useful in things like blog posts where you need to list out steps, or recipes for listing ingredients, or even creating items in a navigation menu. Not only are they an opportunity for styling, but they also have accessibility implications. I showed you how we could change out the bullets or numbers on lists using HTML, but because this is part of presentation, it is considered best practice to style these types of things with CSS. Let's take a look. Here's the page that I've built for this particular example. I have several lists and I've gone ahead and specified class names so I could target them uniquely. And the two bottom lists are nested lists. So if we look at the rendered version of the HTML, you can see how the bottom two lists are nested. Now the list text is very small and that's because we never made any sort of CSS to style the type size. We do have a font size of 10 pixels that's setting the overall root font size for all HTML elements. Because I never declared any sort of font size on the list items, they are going to inherit that 10 pixel. So let's go ahead and let's use a group selector. I'm separating my selectors by commas to add multiple items and specify that the font size for the list items changed to 1.5 rems. Now these appear a little bit larger, which is going to be better for our example. Let's now explore some of the specific list properties. There are three properties that you should know about, and these can be applied to UL or OL elements. I'm going to target my first unordered list, and we're going to go ahead and use the list style type property to be able to control the bullet that is displayed. You can see from this list that shows up in Atom that we have quite a few choices. The lists that are specific to the unordered lists are going to be square, none, disk, or circle. So by default, they display as a disk. If I change this to circle and we save our page and we refresh, you can see how now these change to hollow bullets. So you can easily change the bullet style to something other than what the default behavior is. We can do the same sort of thing on our ordered lists. So if I target my second list, which is an ordered list, and we go ahead and use our list style type, we have a lot more choices in regards to the ordered lists. So you can see that I can change to any of the numeric or alpha related characters. So if I wanted this to be lower alpha, I can specify lower alpha, and now these will change to ABC. If I wanted these to be lower Roman, I would just go ahead and specify lower Roman, and these will change to Roman numerals. I'll go ahead and I'll make a CSS comment that will list out the potential list style type values so that you can experiment around with these on your own. The next property that I want to talk about is the list style position. This is going to set whether the bullets at the start of each item appear inside or outside of the list. If I go ahead and specify list style position, and we have the options of inside or outside, and let's set the unordered list to have a list style position of inside, we'll use a list style position of outside on our ordered list. And if I save the page and we look at this in the browser, you're going to see that not a lot changed. This top list did move a little bit. Without seeing the boundaries of the list, this is going to be hard to see. So in order to make this more apparent to you, I'm going to go ahead and specify a background color on each of my list items. Now if we refresh, you can see the boundaries that the list has. When we add the list position inside, the bullets actually get pushed inside the boundaries of the list. This will be more apparent if we look at the li box element. So I'm just going to target all li elements and we'll add a background color. And if we save and refresh, you can see where the bullets reside in conjunction with my list. The first list that we're looking at, the bullets are going to appear inside of the list item. 
On the second list, which is an ordered list, the numeric values for the list appear outside the list item. This is how the inside outside is going to affect your list items. I'll be more specific with my selector and we'll say dot ex1 li and then we'll also target dot ex2 li. This will ensure that the rule is going to only be applied to the first two list items. The next list property that we're going to look at is going to be the list style image. For this example, I'm going to target my unordered list, example 3. What we're going to do is we're going to specify list style image, and in order to use the list style image, we'll need to pass in URL, and then within the parentheses, we're going to put the path for where the image is located. In my specific folder, I've already gone ahead and created a very small element that I can use as a custom bullet. I'm in the CSS folder on the CSS file, so I'll need to navigate out of the CSS folder, go into my images folder, and find the file that I'm interested in displaying. Now that I have this specified, I'll save the page, and if we refresh in the browser, you can see that the bullets have been replaced with my custom graphic. Being able to utilize custom graphics for your images can allow you to create a nice custom touch to your lists. You do need to be careful with the graphic of the image itself. You want to make sure that it's not overly complex. You'll also need to make sure that the size of the image is not too big. These fish are bordering on being a little too large. Since my bullets here are a little large, I'm going to spread out my list items and give them a little more space. I can do this using margin, but I would need to target the li elements. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change my selector to a descendant selector. When you apply list style image, you can apply it to the ul or the li element. Either one will take this property. Now that I have that, I'll go ahead and add the margin property. I'm going to add margin on both the top and the bottom of my list items. We'll add margin of 8 pixels. I do not want margin to appear on the right and the left, so I'm going to use shorthand notation and specify that the second value is 0. When you apply only two values to a margin or padding item, you are going to be targeting the top and the bottom with the first numeric value and the right and the left with the second numeric value. If we save our page now and go back to the browser, you'll see how now I've given a little more space around the list items. Sometimes you may want to make the color of the list items different from the rest of the list. If we go ahead and target our fourth list and add a color value, when I refresh my page, you can see that all of the list items are now blue, both the text and the actual numeric values. What I would like to do is I would like the color of the numeric values to be a different color. In order for us to change only the list colors, we'll need to use a pseudo element. The pseudo element that we're going to use is called marker. So I'm going to leave my ol.example4, I'm going to put space, and we'll put colon colon marker. We'll talk about pseudo elements more in detail, but for right now, know that the marker pseudo element is for styling the stylistic marker of a list item. So we could apply this to ordered lists or unordered lists. If I save my page now and we refresh in the browser, you can see that now only the numeric portions of my list appear as blue. The rest of the list still appears as the default color, which in this case is black. The final thing that I want to show you is on my last list, let's change the numbering system to Roman numerals for the nested list item. I'm going to go ahead and target ol.example4 space ol. This will ensure that I'm targeting the nested list. What we'll do now is we'll use our list style type, and let's just change this to upper Roman. If we save and refresh our page, you can see that the indented or nested list now appears with the Roman numerals. From an accessibility and usability standpoint, if you want to change the display of any of your list items, it's best to do that with CSS 
rather than using HTML. This also will allow you to have a global control over all of the lists within your project. As you can see, being able to customize and dial in the list bullets to display in the exact manner that you require is very helpful.